Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and this video will be a short slideshow with a summary of the results from the Ashland Hawkwatch 2023 season. The Ashland Hawkwatch is located at the Ashland Nature Center in Hokesson, Delaware, and we're a Hawkwatch, so our goal is to spot and identify as many migrating raptors as possible. And we keep track of the raptors by hour, and we also record weather data every hour, and that information gets submitted to a website called hawkcount.org. The Ashland Hawkwatch has been run every fall since 2007, and I've been the counter since 2017. It's held every day in September, October, and November, unless there's a steady rain or other weather that would prevent a raptor flight. This year we had 633 hours of observation, and during that time, we counted a total of 24,296 migrating raptors. And I have an asterisk there because that was a new record. And it's almost twice the average, 183% of all the season averages. Throughout the season, we saw a total of 139 different bird species. And volunteers contributed more than 1,300 hours. And most of those were from a small core group that came almost every day. but we have a large number of volunteers who come throughout the season and help us spot and identify the birds. And if we take a look at this chart in the top right, left to right is time. So the very left is September 1st and the very right is the end of November. And this shows vertically how many birds were seen each day. So you can see that there was one really big peak day in mid-September and a couple of moderate days surrounding that couple other big days later in the season but because of the scale in that one really big day most days you can't even see anything at all so it just shows that sometimes um, a large percentage of the entire season comes through on a small number of days before we jump into the individual species let me give an overall summary of the raptors so here we have a nice photo of a juvenile northern harrier this season we saw 15 species of raptors and 11 of them ended up having a total that was above average and only four had a total that was below average. We set a new overall season total for all the raptors combined. We had new season records for three species and we had new single day records for three species as well. Okay, let's take a look at the individual species starting with black vulture. This season we had 206 black vultures, which was only about one third of the average. So a really low year for black vultures. And it's a couple things I can say about that. One is black vultures are a little controversial to begin with in terms of whether or not they migrate. So we tend to count them if they're showing a typical migratory direction, meaning they came from the north or the northeast and they continued on past us to the south or the southwest. So we do our best to keep a, um, a standard of what we're counting as migrants. But I think from year to year, there's also um, a lot of variation just based on personal interpretation. The other thing I'll say is that black vultures seem to have been hit hard the past few years by avian flu. And I know that some research has been done on that. But just overall, we're seeing fewer black vultures every day than we were, say, a couple years ago. The high count for black vultures this season was 47 on October 2nd. All of the photos of birds in this presentation came from this season, and we see that this black vulture has a yellow wing tag, might also be called a patagial tag, with number 247. And this is an individual we saw three times throughout the season. I think it was once every month. They were very spread out. And this is a bird that actually was born in this general area um, and was banded in the nest and with the tag put on it. So it's, it's a local bird that seems to wander around, but it's kind of funny that we're out there all day, every day looking at birds and we saw this same bird only three times. So um, maybe that's just a sign of how much black vultures wander, but it, it's always fun to see the same individual bird um, when you can recognize it as the same bird because it has something like a wing tag. And if you look at the, the chart here, we see that black vultures occur mostly in the mid part of the season. Um, and they were somewhat sporadic this year. So, you know, some days with quite a few and then a lot of days where we didn't count any. For turkey vultures, we had 3,359 this season, which was above average. And we also set a single day record of 556, which is on November 3rd. And again, turkey vultures are a little hard to count because there's a lot of local ones around as well. But as you get into the peak migration time of the season, you start to see larger groups migrating through. 
So I, I feel like the count for turkey vultures is fairly accurate from year to year compared to black vultures where there's more variation. And if we take a look at the graph, we see that we do get turkey vultures migrating the whole season, a little bit slow throughout September and into early October. But once you hit mid-October, you start to get some bigger days. And then the peak is more at the end of October and into early November. And you can see that one peak day that we had there on November 3rd. We had 194 osprey, which was a little below average. The peak day was September 12th with 20. And taking a look at the graph, you can see that osprey are more of an early season migrant. So the bigger numbers come in September and then smaller numbers throughout October and then a couple stragglers into November. For bald eagles, we had 584, which was above average, and that follows a trend of increasing bald eagle numbers, although this was a little bit lower than some other recent years. And the high count was 31 on October 15th. And if we look at the photo, there we have two bald eagles that were kind of fighting it out in midair and locked talons and spun briefly, and I was lucky enough to have my camera on them when they did that. That's always a really cool thing to see. Taking a look at the graph, um, we see that bald eagles migrate the whole season with perhaps a peak more towards the middle to late part of the season. Um, this year, the peak day was right in the middle of the season on October 15th. We ended up with a record season for northern harriers with 244, and there was a high count of 12 on November 6th. And taking a look at the graph here, we see that it, they're kind of slow towards the beginning of the season. But once we got halfway into the season, the numbers picked up. And especially into early November this year, it seemed like we were getting really good numbers of them, which I think is a little bit later than we would normally get the peak of them most seasons. Um, but definitely into that early November period, we kept on commenting just how many Harriers were, we were seeing. And it wasn't any single day with a huge number. It was just pretty steady. You know, Every day we were getting six or seven or eight. And the photo here is an adult male northern harrier, sometimes called the gray ghost. They have a more distinctive plumage, very white or silvery underneath compared to the juveniles and the adult females, which are more brown underneath. For sharp-shinned hawks, we had 1,949, which was a little bit above average. And the peak day was October 17th with 240, which was only four below the single day record. So this was the second highest day of all time and if we look at the graph you can see that there's various periods you can see one peak here in mid-september kind of around the same time that the broad wings peaked but we really got a couple really high days for sharp shins right here in mid-october so you can see there were kind of three really big days and um, just so many more of those couple days than we had any other period the rest of the season for Cooper's Hawks, we had 443, which was just above the average, and we set a new single day record of 66 on October 17th, which was that same day that we saw we had the highest count of sharp shins as well. So that was a really big day for exhibitors and just a lot of fun. And taking a look at the graph here, we see kind of the same thing that for Cooper's Hawks, just like for Sharpies, there was this really big peak right in mid-October. Moving on to the Budios, for red-shouldered hawks, we had a new record of 789 for the season, which was 171% of the average. And we had a peak day of 101 on November 2nd. So anytime you're getting more than 100 red shoulders in a day, that's a really big day for red shoulders. We've had a, a handful of days with over 100 over the past few years, um, but definitely um, a really big day. And if we look at the uh, the graph here, we can see that we had not only that one day with over 100, but we had a couple other pretty big days too with around 80 or 90 and then a couple other days with around 50. So we didn't have a, a single day record, but we had a, a couple of really strong flights throughout the season. And you can see that red shoulders do migrate the whole season, but uh, the first half they're in small numbers. We had one peak here in mid-October, but really it's more late October into early to mid-November is when we get the peak migration of them. And that's pretty standard. We usually think of the second week of November as being the peak time for red-shouldered hawks. And I would also mention the Quaker Ridge Hawk Watch, which is up in Greenwich, Connecticut. And the past couple of years, they've had really big numbers of red-shouldered hawks. And when I first started as the counter at Ashland, we used to be sort of neck and neck with them, that we were always one and two, but some years we beat them. And that was more getting around, I don't know, 500, 600 red shoulders. And so 
our numbers the past couple of years have crept up a little bit, but their numbers have really gone up. They've gone from getting 600 in a season to getting over 1,000 in a season. I think this year they had around 1,600. So they've really had a dramatic increase, whereas we've only had a slight increase. But like I said, still ended up with a record season, so we certainly can't complain. Moving on to Broadwinged Hawks, we had a new season record for Broadwinged Hawks with over 15,000, and we had a new single day record with 9,503, and that came on September 20th. So really good season for Broadwings, and that was true across the board for the Hawk Watches in our region. Um, some years we don't get a lot. We've had seasons that we've had less than 1,000 total. So it just kind of depends on what route the Broadwings are taking based on what the weather north of us is and what exact route they take as they come through the Piedmont region here in northern Delaware. The photo here on the bottom left is what we would call a kettle of Broadwings. We just call a kettle when you have lots of hawks migrating together and circling on a thermal. And on September 20th, we had a lot of kettles and it was a fun day because it was like we would get a a number of birds come through and then there was a little bit of a rest period and then we had a really big period midday i think the one hour we had i don't know how many thousand maybe like four thousand broad wings and then we were actually coming up on the end of the day it was getting close to five o'clock which is our normal end time and we were below the previous single day record and so there was a little bit of suspense like are there more birds are we going to break the record today and we were scanning hard and scanning hard and then someone spotted a group of like a thousand Broadwings, the biggest kettle of the day. So once we saw that, we knew, okay, we have the new single day record. And then over the next 45 minutes or so, we had another thousand come through. So like I said, ended up with over 9,500 Broadwings for the day. I think the previous record was a little over 7,000. So it's just one of these really spectacular days that you only get once every you know, 10 years or so. So that was a lot of fun to be a part of that. We had 540 red-tailed hawks, which was well below average, only 65% of the average. And that kind of follows a general trend that's happening with red tails, where as a species, they're doing well, but the numbers that are being seen at hawk watches are going down. Um, and part of that is just red tail staying farther north in the winter. Um, this year, the, it didn't get particularly cold during November, so sometimes that just keeps from pushing birds farther south. And we saw that with other things as well, like tundra swans and snow geese, where um, normally we would be seeing them, but we didn't really have any this year. We saw like two individual snow geese, but no flocks. So I think part of it was it was a little bit of a mild November and that didn't push a lot of the red tails down. And just over time, as things warm up and maybe more development farther north, Red tails are able to stay farther north, so the numbers at hawk watches are lower, but as a species, their population may actually be increasing. The high count for the season was 54, which was on November 11th, and looking at the graph, we see that red tails migrate the whole season, but they have more of a peak at the end of October into early November. We had a good season for golden eagles with 20, which is only three below the record, and we had a high count of three on November 1st, as well as one other day. Um, you can see the chart here that started seeing golden eagles on October 15th was the first one, and then it went to around November 20th. But most of them occurred in the end of October into the first two weeks of November. And here in the top right, you can see here's a photo where two golden eagles migrated through together. And then here's another photo of a golden eagle. And in terms of identification, the golden eagles stand out compared to bald eagles because they have a small head. See how much bigger the tail looks compared to the head on this golden eagle. And with the immature golden eagles, you usually get three white patches you can look for. There's a white patch kind of in the center of each wing here. It's the base of the primary feathers. See it on this wing here as well. And a white base to the tail. So those three white patches really stand out compared to immature bald eagles, which a lot of times they have white underneath, but they're real splotchy looking. They have white in the wing pits, white on the underside of the body, just real messy looking. I always think golden eagles look really clean. And you can also see the gold color on the back of the neck here on the nape. And that's where the name golden eagle comes from. It's the color on the back of the neck. Moving on to the falcons for American kestrels, we had 372, which was slightly below average. 
The high count was 43 on September 27th. And looking at the graph here, you see that um, most kestrels come through more in the first half of the season. We had 61 merlins this season, which was right around the average, just slightly above. And the high count was nine on October 15th. And if you look at the graph here, you see that that nine really stood out compared to uh, all the other days. The highest other than that day was only three. So a lot of days with one, a lot of days with two, a couple of days with three, and then just that peak day on October 15th. And you'll probably notice that um, some of these dates keep popping up over and over again. You can tell when we had really good days where maybe the birds got backed up and then we had really good weather and everything came through. So, um, you know, October 15th seems like it was a really good day this season. And peregrine falcons, we had 20, which was right around the average, again, just slightly above, and the high count was three. And there were a couple neat moments for peregrines this season. I know the one day we had a peregrine migrate through, and then a little while later we had two juvenile peregrines come through together that gave us a really nice look. So sometimes we don't get as excited about peregrines as we should, but really we had the same number of peregrines this season as we did golden eagles. And looking at the chart, you can see that peregrines are spread out throughout most of the season. Um, didn't have any of the the last half of November, but other than that, they kind of come through sporadically with a little bit more of a peak in the early October period. We also had a short-eared owl that was counted as a migrant on November 2nd, and it was too distant to get photos, but as the thermals were starting to build that morning, we spotted it circling up in the horizon, and then it went off in a migratory direction. So something that's kind of rare to see at a hawk watch um, but you know it's not unexpected to get one out of all of the owl species you might see migrating at a hawk watch short-eared owl is the most likely we had some nice non-raptor highlights this season as well we had a glossy ibis in the top right here you see a photo of two sandhill cranes that migrated through together the bottom photo is a immature red-headed woodpecker we had a few red-headed woodpeckers throughout the season and we also had an orange crowned warbler. And finally, there's a lot of people that I'd like to thank for the Ashland Hawk Watch. Um, I'm the counter who's out there every day, but there's a lot of support from many people and organizations who really make this all come together. So thank you to Joe Sebastiani from the Delaware Nature Society. Thanks to Dr. Jeff Bueller from the Delaware Ornithological Society. Jordan Brown, Rachel Yurchisen, and Carly Costello from Denrec and all of the Hawk Watch volunteers and visitors who spend their time to come out and help out and see some birds together. So thank you everyone who made this such a great record-breaking season. And next for me in terms of Hawk Watching is that I will be returning to Braddock Bay this spring for my sixth season. And I'm really looking forward to getting back up there. There's going to be a total solar eclipse in early April that the Hawk Watch is in the path of totality, so that will be a lot of fun. That runs from March 1st through the end of May. So hope a lot of you are able to follow along. I'll probably make daily YouTube videos like I've done the past few years. And um, yeah, really looking forward to getting back up to Braddock Bay. Such a great birding spot overall and a lot of raptors, a lot of songbirds. You never know what you're going to see. So follow me this spring up at Braddock Bay. And I'll end it with a photo that was taken on the last day of the season. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.